Hello and welcome to Tales and Trails. I'm Minnie Menon. This week we take you to one of the most spectacular sites in India. A vav called the Ranki Vav, built by Queen Udaimati of the Solanki dynasty way back in the 11th century in Patan in Gujarat. At that time, this was one of the biggest capitals of the period and the city was comparable to any great city in the world. Go back there today and you will find traces of those glory days. This is considered the most spectacular step well in India. Buried in the ground for centuries, it was referred to in local legend. It is amazing that the excavation of this step well was started only in the 1980s. Seven stories deep and exquisitely carved, this Ran Kivav, built in the 11th century by the Solanki queen Udaimati, stood close to the river Saraswati and mark the high point of a powerful kingdom. Capital of Gujarat, known then as Anahillapura, uh, Pataka, that is about two kilometers to the northeast of the steppe well. It is now a small town known as Anavada. So, we imagine that Patan, the capital town, must have been a large place with several thousand uh, inhabitants, Hindus and Jains, but not Buddhists. There must have been many scores of Hindu temples, Jain temples, monasteries for the Jains, and with rich people's uh, mansions, with a very flourishing textile industry of the Patolas. Home to the famous weave, the Patan Patola, which also flourished under royal patronage, there are hints of the old grandeur of Anahilapura around today's Patan. In Mehsana, close by, you will find the Modhera Sun Temple. The shrine to the sun god was built during the reign of Bhima I of the Solanki or the Western Chalukya dynasty during 1026 to 27 CE. It was for him that his wife Udaimati built the Ranki Vav. Facing the Sun Temple is a tank resplendent with small shrines likely to have been built even earlier. Inside the temple you will find a dancing hall which is probably built later. While the main idol within the Modhera temple is gone, the walls are covered with reliefs of the main deity, the sun god Surya and the many stories attached to him. You can even find him booted in the Central Asian style here. While the sculptures here have been left mutilated by marauding armies and nature, this monument built slightly later, the Ran Ki Vav, has stood strong. This of course is largely because it was buried for much of its history. Dr. Kiritman Kodi, who has done extensive work over here, explains. When the Ran Ki Vav was excavated, the Solanki Empire was at its zenith. Bhimadeva had died. He had been a powerful, he was a powerful king, emperor of Western India. He was followed by uh, Karnadeva, who was also a very powerful emperor. At that time, the empire was flush with funds. So, in keeping with the tradition, of commemorating uh, dead kings, his queen created this monument. Through history, building vows or water places was considered to be auspicious, especially when it was to commemorate the dead. But the Ranki Vav goes beyond the ordinary. The exquisite sculptures here clearly tell us that this was a period when art was at its zenith in this area. Originally, there would have been as many as 800 large sculptures here. Only half remain today. The sculptures are broadly of two kinds, one of the main deities in niches and the other consisting of figures such as Apsaras and the regions of the four cardinal directions, the Dikpalas, carved on the upright posts. Interestingly, the two dominant figures you will see here are those of Vishnu and Parvati. This is a Vaishnavite structure and given that Vishnu is intimately associated with cosmic waters, it was common for vavs like this to have his figure. 
Here you will find not only Vishnu but the god in all his 10 avatars. Parvati or Gauri's dominant presence archaeologists point out could have been because Queen Udayamati was a devotee. The central niche of the vav has a depiction of Vishnu sleeping on Shesha. It is out of the world. The Ram ki vav, the Mudhera temple and the local part in Patola still being woven in Patan give us a glimpse into another time, another era. Amazing, isn't it? Well, next time you're in Ahmedabad, do try and make a trip to Patan. It's just about 3 hours drive away. And also while there, do check out the Patan Patola Museum. It's uh, quite fabulous and you can even pick up a sari or two from there. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today on Tales and Trails. Thank you.